Hello everyone, this is Zahid from Inspire and Ignite and in this video I'm going to cover one of the most uh, crucial and fundamental topic and con fundamental question that everybody should answer before going for a research program or PhD. Because answering this question will lead the direction for your PhD and what you're going to do and decide what you're going to do after your PhD. That is that basic question is why really you do who, who do you want to do PhD? I mean why you want to do PhD? There are a lot of answers for this because when I was in school doing PhD, I met almost like 200 students who are doing PhD and everybody had a different reason for that. I mean people who are coming from the biology background, they had a different reasons. People who were coming from computer science background, they had a different reasons for coming to uh, coming for PhD program. But I think if you are not clear about why you really want to do PhD, then you will ha you'll end up in like messed up situations, and maybe uh, sometimes you might not complete your PhD. For me, what I want to do in this video is to give you an idea why did I do PhD and how it helped me during my PhD and how it affected uh, my career and how it's influencing, how it influenced my everyday life. When I was thinking of doing PhD, I had three solid reasons to do PhD. The first one was a solid job that can pay me a huge, I mean, I mean, a, a comfortable living. So, how do I know when I do a PhD, I get a, I get a comfortable job? It was like this, like when I was in engineering final year, I used to read a lot of magazines. I mean, a lot of IEEE magazines and, and a lot of technical magazines. So in IEEE spectrum, at the, at the end of the IEEE spectrum, there were usually jobs for assistant professors in North America and Europe. And usually that salary was around like $60,000. So when I was B.Tech student, I used to calculate like this, like once it's a $60,000, 60,000 into 50 rupees, it's almost like 30, 30, 30 lakh rupees. And in India, I think nobody, no company can pay me that much at the time. So I decided, I think like the basic minimum requirement for that position was, was like to have a PhD in computer science or any, any engineering background. So I, at the time I decided I should go for it. Many of my friends went for jobs and and uh, they continued with that, but that didn't influence me because their pay was, was like the maximum pay at that time was like five lakhs per annum, and when it compares to this, after giving like five six years, thirty lakhs looked look very lucrative, <laughs> lucrative for me. So that's why I thought like doing PhD is a better option. But the second foremost question, fundamental question is. Uh, the, the second most important thing was like my father. My father is uh, really a genius man. His English, you should see his English. You will go bonkers. I mean, it, he's so good in English and his knowledge about different fields where he worked in is so high. He always wanted to study a lot, but finance, because of financial conditions, as, he, as it's very common in Indian scenario because our parents, have worked really really hard for us and uh, most of the parents were like uh, uh, not even middle class so they worked really hard and they sacrificed a lot so my father is one of the example of that he worked really hard and he had to run the family and at the same time he had to study so even I mean finally he tried his best to get his master degree but uh, he could not do his PhD so he always when I was in master degree and bachelor degree, he used to write me very big emails. I mean, very big mails. Sorry, not emails. At that time, there was no email. So he used to write hundred and mails. I mean, very long mails, uh, maybe fifteen pages, twenty pages, encouraging me and my family for and giving us the example of like uh, Amartya Sen and Muhammad Yunus and all other people who got Nobel prizes and all that. So he kept that standard very high. So when I finished my master degree and joined a job, he's, he again gave me an email asking for like, what is your plan for future? I mean, what is your future plans? Do you want to go for higher studies or PhD or something like that? So that also had back in, uh, I mean, uh, was in my mind. So that also helped me to take a decision on going for PhD, even though I had a couple of jobs and left them and then finally joined PhD at IIT. 
And the third, the most important uh, factor or reason that led me to go to PhD program was IIT itself. I kept IIT as a, as a class of excellence. I mean, for, my, for me, studying in IIT in India was like, uh, like the, 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 the top most thing one engineering student can do. And I was very fascinated about IITs from very young age, like maybe in 10th, uh, in 12th, I wrote IIT G could not make it. And then I wrote GATE, I could not make it to IITs. And then I decided, I mean, like, I had to go for PhD, I mean, and the IITs were, were on the list. And that, 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 that made it possible to reach to IITs too. So what did I do is, I applied for all IITs not only applied because when I was in master degree I visited a couple of times to IIT Madras and I visited like my five five maybe five to six times to IIC Bangalore and all other places and I also visited Chennai Mathematical Institute and uh, JIPMER and I mean uh, uh, I mean other research institutes in India I visited Triple IT Hyderabad, I visited Central University of Hyderabad. I was totally into it, but few of my friends recommended me to go to go to foreign universities for PhD. I tried to go to America and uh, I I went to a consultancy basically and asked them the details about like how to apply for PhD in, 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 uh, in, in North America, Australia, New Zealand and Canada and, and, and Germany too. But, uh, but IITs had a very different charm for me. So I finally just like, even my friends pushed me a lot, but I just skipped that option and then moved to IITs. And I think that was a very nice and great decision that I took. So then how this, this decision, then finally I did, I did a PhD from IIT. How did the making money, I mean, the, my first motivation, first reason to go for PhD was to make a big amount in a couple of years, I mean, in every month's salary. So that's why I went to went for PhD and becoming a faculty, when I went to IITs and when I finished my PhD, I realized there are way, way better chances to make money than just being a faculty member in somewhere. And my teaching, I, I know my, my strength and my weaknesses at the time, so I... I joined Indian Statistical Institute as, uh, as assistant professor in Calcutta, but uh, at the back of my mind, it was always the, like, how can I, I mean, do better and this research can go to industry or, or maybe used by many people. And on the same time, I make money. I mean, it's not that like I sacrifice, I want to sacrifice, I want to sacrifice, but not at the cost of my, my comfort. So that was my back of my mind. So I decided to move to industry. And that's how, I mean, I think my first decision about like making good money and have a comfortable life led me to do PhD. And then after the PhD, I kept constantly, uh, I was constantly looking for a better opportunity for myself. So I landed in industry and I took a very different career path than most of the PhD students take like. Most of them go to academics and become professors or something like that. I joined the industry and I am working here for like more than a couple of years. So uh, what I feel is like, why really you do want to do PhD is, is going to affect your whole entire PhD, I mean, a PhD course of time. So what I recommend you is if you have decided because it's a very long time you spend because if your goals are not clear, you, you might spend end up spending like six to eight years. But if your goals are clear, you might end up spending like two and a half years. So I, I am very thankful to, for my, thankful to my professors and all administration we had there because they helped me in a way that I can finish my PhD in two and a half years. I mean, I, in two years, 11 months, I submitted the thesis and I was my P PhD was awarded in, in I mean, uh, two years, uh, 11 or 12 uh, 11 months. So what I'm saying with this is uh, when you have a plan, when you know why you're doing certain things, your, your every action will go towards that. And that is one of the most fundamental thing to be successful in life. And especially for PhD, because any single mistake can land you in a mess. I mean, totally a mess. I have friends who finished PhD in five years, six years, seven years, eight years. And few of them went to a stage of depression that they really wanted to quit the PhD, even after spending seven, eight years. 
So what I want to tell you is to be very clear before you go to PhD. I mean, why really you want to do PhD? And the bigger and the stronger is the goal, the better is the PhD. So I wish you a very good luck with this video and I ask you to watch the coming up videos and, and all the videos in, in this playlist. Uh, with this, I conclude this video and ask you to subscribe to Inspire and Ignite, Inspire and Ignite uh, and like us on Facebook and follow us on Google+. Thank you so much for watching the video and I wish you all a very, very good luck with your PhD and research programs.